cases that I see. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Kwan for inviting me and also the board. And uh, today, I want to share about these keys of the kingdom of heaven. Actually, I have not prepared anything. I thought just let the Holy Spirit lead. Uh. But for the first time, the brother said, you got any PowerPoint? So the first thing that came to my mind is, <coughs> maybe we should talk about the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? You see, in Matthew 16, verse uh, 19, uh, oh, where did I put it there? Oh, yeah. ah. Jesus said that, the Lord says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Amen? So we need to know what is the meaning of binding and losing. But when you say to bind means to tie up, right? To fasten securely and to, it's also to confine, restricted. Your actions are restricted, right? Just like your handcuff, you know? Bind up your handcuff, right? So, you know, in the Bible, in Psalms 23, it says, the Lord prepared a table in the presence of our enemies. Uh, <clears throat> During those days in war, when they go out, they have victory, they'll bring all those prisoners, right? Imagine a prisoner. So they'll be in, all in chains. The leg also chained up, the hands also chained up. And imagine that, they always celebrate their victory. So the people in chains will be down there watching the celebration and everything. Huh? So it's like you're handcuffed, you're restrained, you cannot do anything. The enemy is defeated, right? So when we talk about losing, Loose means to untie, right? To untie, to set free from the restraint, set free from your, uh, what do you call it, the handcuffs, right? And also the chains and the bondages that is in your life. Amen? But this, okay, this is, uh, you look, you read in Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 8. Uh, here I want to emphasize the word, bind them on your foreheads. Uh, so, and also there's in uh, Deuteronomy 11, verse 18 and 19, also the word there, bind them on your foreheads. Bind in your hearts and your mind the word of God. The words that the... So this was Moses telling the people in Deuteronomy, right? So when our Lord Jesus Christ shared about Matthew 16, 19, He's not talking about any new theology. Huh? He's reminding what in the Old Testament, correct? So He is asking you, what, what is it that you want to bind? What is it going to lose? Okay, I want you to imagine. Uh, when I remember when we have our <coughs> children, uh, our our first son, uh, and then uh, I I watch my wife when she want to do cooking or something, you know, want to do work. Then the baby will cry, right? What she does, she will take a a sarong, uh, she will put the baby type, and then she will go everywhere to do her things, you know. Right, even sleep in the sarong. So this is like uh, binding her, the baby to herself. So wherever my, my wife go, the baby will go along. Correct, no? right? Of course, she won't take, go to a dangerous place uh, huh? where there's fire. No, definitely not, right? So, and I remember also when, uh, when we go out to the shopping complex. Do you know where you have seen a senior like this or not? There's this apparatus, uh, I don't know, I forgot what it's a bind. When my, my, my baby boy will be facing me, I will bind up to my chest. Baby carrier. <laughs> a baby carrier, then we go wherever. So we go wherever the baby will follow. Right? So that is an example of what we are binding up. Amen? And so, to fully understand these scriptures, as I said, what Moses is saying is you need to bind yourself to the covenant of God. Huh? The covenant of the great I am. The blessings as uh, Brother Tiro has shared, uh, the blessings of God, the word of God, the promises of God that we need to bind our, ourselves to. And that's what Moses is referring to them. Right? Uh, this strong man is later, okay. You see, God's enemy, right? If we read in Revelation 1, 18 and uh, Romans 8, verse 7, uh, Jesus says, 
I am the living one. I was dead, not death. Uh, sorry, uh. But, and now look, I'm alive forever. Right? And he took back, he hold the keys of death and Hades. <clears throat> that what he has done at Calvary, the finished work at Calvary, he has <clears throat> already defeated the devil already. Right? But here what it shows is Jesus reigns supreme. He is forever triumphant. That's why what he has done on the cross is he has already taken back the keys of death and Hades. So Satan is a defeated enemy. Right? Satan is already a defeated enemy. Ah, thank you. And he is no more an enemy is when he's still an enemy means he still can trouble you, still can uh, persecute or do things, right? But Satan has already been defeated by our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? And if you look at uh, Revelations 1, uh, yeah, 118, uh, 118 says, right? and you look at Romans 8 verse 7, it says, the carnal mind is enmity to God, for it's not subject to God's law, and neither can it be. So, God has no enemy. Huh? If you read, Jesus Christ, our Lord, has defeated the devil already. Huh? So, but God has an enemy. When in Romans 8, 7 says, it's our flesh, our own flesh, our carnal mind. With the word enmity there is a very serious word. Huh? Enemy of God. Right? This is for those that we haven't known Christ yet. But also, that you, if you look at it, huh? When you're in Christ already, of course, we have the grace of God, right? The love of God in our lives. <clears throat> but we must fight against our flesh. Our flesh, our thoughts, uh, right? Is the one that is leading us to sin, temptations. Correct? Are you still with me? Right, yeah? So, it's not that we are God's enemy, no. Our flesh, right? Of course, we have our salvation. Uh, this is telling, all right? So, when you come to binding and losing, what does it mean to bind and lose? First thing is, we must bind our flesh, our carnal mind, with the thoughts of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the mind of Christ, as in 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, right? And we are, Ephesians 5, one. we are imitators of Christ. So whatever our Lord Jesus Christ, His thoughts, His character, His integrity, uh, we... We need to bind ourselves to the mind of Christ. Amen? So there are many things that you can also bind. You bind up your... Uh, here it's talking about Revelation 20, verse 1 to 3. Eh? If you read it properly, <coughs> and uh, Apostle John says, And I saw an angel coming down of heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon, the ancient serpent, who's the devil, and he puts it, Satan, uh, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed him over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until a thousand years have, have ended. So when I read this verse, the angel from heaven came down to bind up, to lock up Satan for a thousand years. And I mean, this is something, who are we to, to bind up Satan? Correct or not? Uh, even God has got to send an angel, you know? So, when, if you read the Bible properly, our Lord Jesus Christ has never bind Satan. He has never bind any evil forces or what. He just got to command only. Rebuke, command, and, and that's it, right? But of course, people can tell us, oh, uh, in uh, Mark 16, <coughs> verse uh, 17, huh? Uh, it's verse uh, 15 onwards uh, that whoever we are believers right and signs will accompany us right and in his name we can drive out demons speak in new tongues right demons we can drive out demons and speak in new tongues but you see our Lord Jesus Christ has never bind Satan uh, he also you know he just command and he left correct so what is it that we need to bind so like, we need to bind ourselves. Ah, okay, then we come to this one. Huh? So, before this, uh, in John 11, 1 to 44, it's a very clear case when you read it, you meditate on it. You can see the act 
what Jesus did in the binding and loosing. It's for us to follow. You see? There's another one in Luke 13, uh, verse 11 onwards. It's about the, the woman who was bowed down for 18 years. And the Lord says, Satan has bound this woman for 18 years. Right? And the Lord looked at her. He said, you are loose from your infirmity. You are loose. So he already declared, that's another example, right? That the enemy, Satan, has bound this woman, but the Lord said, you are loose. And then only he, he laid hands, the woman straightened up, right? <clears throat> but very clear here, if you read in John 11, 1 to 44, right? Everyone know this uh, in the Bible, this testimony, right? Lazarus has been dead uh, for two days when he wrote the message, right? and the Lord waited another two days before he went. And the disciples don't understand. Huh? When the Lord says, uh, he is sleeping. So the disciples say, what? Oh, if he's sleeping, it's okay, he will be well. And the Lord will tell them, no, Lazarus is dead already. Right? And then, when he reached, it's already four days. So if you read onwards, uh, in uh, uh, verse 39, Martha said, uh, you, you do not roll over the stone. Four days already, he has died. Huh? John 11, 39. A foul, bad smell already, four days. You see, sometimes also in our lives, uh, if the Lord has listened to Martha, you just think of it. Uh, oh yeah, four days. Very foul smell coming up, which is true. <coughs> Correct or not? Definitely, I believe Lazarus is already rotten up already. Huh? But sometimes in our life, uh, you meet people like this, who shake up your faith, you know. Huh? Shake up your faith with temptations, telling you, give you peer pressure. If you look at young people nowadays, all the photography and all this, even addiction with drugs, uh, computer games, they cause a lot of problems, right? So we need to get out of all these temptations. But our Lord Jesus Christ is showing that He never bothered what Martha said, which affect his four days is very foul smell. Uh, he just said, roll, roll the stone, <laughs> roll the stone over, roll the stone away, right? And then, that's why in temptation in this world, the Lord gives us a way to escape. Uh, you read 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Right? When we are tempted, He gives us a way to escape. Right? Because He knows what we can take. What limit can you go? Huh? Can you accept? You know? you know, but sometimes I remember one case. Huh? <clears throat> I was in... Uh, I've been praying for my brother for eight years, younger brother, eight years. Right, so, I want him to mix with uh, Christian people and <coughs> go to an organization. Uh, I, I think in Saramban, they have it here. Uh, I think full gospel business man. Uh, gospel man. Or, or, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, so I brought him there and then... Uh, there's one brother who started scolding me just because I thought that, you know, God can use anyone. I was in Philippines before I shared, the pastor introduced and they sing song. Then a man came, a member came in on a wheelchair. He's on a wheelchair for umpteen years already. More than 10 years come in, you know. And uh, suddenly the pastor told, I think I believe that boy is his son. He's only about 9 years old or so, you know. 9 or 10 years old only. Then he said, uh, boy, uh, the anointing upon you. Uh, I go and pray for uncle. Uh, so the boy was so happy. He went there, he laid hands on, uh, on the uncle, on the wheelchair, on his legs. I just asked the Lord to uh, heal him so that he can get up from the wheelchair and walk. Simple prayer, you know. Of course, he said, in Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, so, and then sit down everything. So when the time finished the session of preaching, uh, of course, I called <coughs> to come for prayer. So the wheelchair that man was sitting right in front. Right? You know what happened, brothers and sisters? <coughs> he just got up and walked to the altar. You know? Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Let's keep our hands to our Lord Jesus Christ. I didn't pray for him. So, of course, the Word of God, but the, the Word of God is very important. I can see that you're teaching the Word of God, huh? even for Chinese, and it's very important. If you know me, I'm always about the word. Huh? Everything is about the word. Pray with people, pray for people, also the word of God, right? So, 
I noticed that. So I told this brother, <coughs> I said, because he asked me, ah, what miracles that you have seen? So I share about this. So suddenly this guy come and said, we don't need anointing. Oh. You are confusing him, you know. Huh? I got to apologize. Ask for forgiveness. My God, I was thinking, looking at him. I hardly know this person. Ah. <coughs> but the arrogance, ah, the pride of man. Ah. That's why in 1 John uh, 2, 15, 16, ah, 17, he said, what? The three things there. The lust of the flesh, the pride of the eyes, right? And also the pride of life. This thing. So I look at him. And then uh, I said, what, what is that? A confused. He's just asking me, right? So, my brother always was watching me. <laughs> and then, you just, he said, don't have to do anything. Just do what you just do. Command. Command. The sickness go. Command, command. That's all. Command only. Don't know whether you heard about this theology. <laughs> command, command, command only. That's all. You know? So, I was shocked. Then I was telling that, you know, ex, you know Jesus Christ, our Lord also, uh, He need to be anointed. Correct or not? Huh? Acts 10, verse 38, when Peter said how God anointed the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, huh? anointed Him with the power of the Holy Spirit, and then He went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. The word devil is there, no? Oppressed by the devil, healing all those. So even if our Lord Jesus Christ did the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit, what more we, correct or not? Right? And when Jesus came down, He left His also man and His also God. But when He come down on earth, He can act as God. Ma, right? Why He need to, after being a carpenter, it was 30, then only the ministry started when He was baptized, the Holy Spirit, the symbol of the dove came on Him. Correct? Or not? Yeah? Then, so, sometimes we get confused by this type of Theology, you know, the man-made theology. But always go to the Word. So I always quote the Word, right? Even when, okay, I was ready to pray for that, that uncle on the wheelchair. Huh? I always quote Acts 3, verse 6. Silver and gold, huh? I do not have, what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? Get up and walk. Verse 6. Verse 7 is, and then only Peter took the hand and lift, and the, the man just stood up, started jumping and walked. So this also tells us that you need to let the Holy Spirit do the work. You just don't claim the work already, pray already, then you go off. What Peter did, he hold his hand, right? So the Holy Spirit lifted him up. So, you imagine a person scolding me like that and very fierce, you know, until another brother got to come and say, oh, uh, brother Eddie is so correct, you also correct. To me, you're wrong. You must show me a Bible verse. Huh? Where in the word? That's why when you show the word, everything is about the word, right? And then, of course, the brother took him away, and uh, my brother just accepted Christ after eight years. Uh. He looked at me, he told me one thing. He said, Well, you didn't, your, your old character, if this thing happened and you have shouted back, fight back, or whatever. And he said, Basically, he's telling me you, you have transformed. Huh? But actually, I was so angry. But I got no choice. My brother beside me just accept Christ, you know. And the guy said one thing, you know, I've, I've nearly 40 years in Christ, been to so many conferences, all this, uh, I got to unlearn. Unlearn what I've learned, all this. Uh. And then the theology, you cannot say amen, right? No. Uh, when you pray for people, you cannot say amen. Uh, there's a book in Canaan land, you buy it. It's a handbook. You cannot say the blood of Jesus. You cannot say by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. You cannot speak in tongue. You just command. Uh, anyone sick here, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. If you want a healing touch. Uh, from, I don't know what's wrong. I command this to leave. Command. Uh, then ask, brother, how you feel? Oh, I still feel. No, command you to be healed. <laughs> you get what I mean? Huh? <laughs> cannot say all this. And you cannot even <laughs> decree or declare. You know, Job 22 verse 28 says what? Whatever we decree, huh, it will be established for us. Correct or not? And light will come in our ways. What is light? First John 1 5. God is light. Correct or not? If you read John chapter 1, verse 4, it's talking about Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? In Him, 
Jesus Christ. In Him is life. And in this life is the light of mankind. Right? So when you receive Jesus Christ, you have the light in you. You have practically the, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And you know, Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. Indirectly, brothers and sisters, you must. God is in you, no? Correct? No? Right? The Holy Trinity. So, I cannot decree, cannot declare. If you notice how many times I come here, all this I use. I talk all this because it's the promises of God. Correct? No? So, then, my, and then my brother, uh, after that, we, we left. And then he told me, you've been transformed. And that way, you have changed, you know, all these things. I was thinking, you're not here. I would have given him a piece of my mind. <laughs> you know? So God also said, this, is, this timing, uh, God is also teaching us, you know. Correct or not? Huh? Make me more patient, really. <laughs> After an incident like that, uh, you know, you're suffering there, get scolding all while your, your anger coming up. You know, this is not from, not from God. Uh, definitely, right? But you cannot take it, my way. I'm so human, right? But God sent my brother beside me, you uh, of all the time, uh, we, he must be beside me that I got to uh, nicely talk. Yeah, show me the word. That's the word they say, right? So that's why God gave you a way to escape huh? whatever temptations or, or whatever things that are. Huh? So, and uh, uh, brothers and sisters, I want, to, I want to share with you just this uh, before. Actually, I don't know why I said this. But God will give us, it's also the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, Galatians 5, 22, 23, right? The nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, at first, there's one there that says long suffering, you know. It's also called patience. I, I rather don't say long suffering, but some words are long suffering, you know. We don't want to suffer a long one. <laughs> Correct or not? We want instant. Now everything a three minute Maggie me, everything or fast one. Uh, we all don't want to have to have long suffering. But the other uh, uh, translation, some say patience. Uh. Patience is a virtue. Amen. Patience is a great virtue. Uh, like uh, you know, before my, I accept Jesus Christ, uh, I don't know where you heard about this. Uh. My wife accepted Christ in 13th of April, 2011. I accepted one month earlier during Vesak Day, Buddha's birthday. My former temple was doing 29 years celebration in uh, 17 of May, 2011. And that one month, uh, if you, she used to share a testimony, uh, in that one month, I really persecuted my wife, you know. Why? Because we've been, before we are in Christ, always quarrel. One. I don't know why, huh? Yeah, correct. Huh? Uh, always quarrel. Then after that, at night, you go to bed, but we always talk things out. Hey, what are we quarreling about? Yeah, huh? simple thing like that. Yeah, but I, I said, yeah, this, now I know it's the devil. I said, oh, the devil do this. <laughs> so, the one month before I accept Christ, I accept Christ, I really persecute her. Give her, uh, I don't want to use the word, lah. H-E-L, one more ad at the back. Uh. <laughs> Liver get tormented. Uh. Really, you know, I think back, uh, wow, how can I do this type of thing? Uh? You know? And normally, little bit thing, uh, she'll fight back one. Uh. Uh? She'll fight back and scold, then we started big argument, all this thing. Uh. So for one month, uh, I never released my anger. Uh. No one to scold, no one to shout. Uh. So long already, uh, 25 years you've been quarreling. Uh. Suddenly so peaceful one month. But you know, she told me, <laughs> I just heard it, when we are in Melbourne, actually we just came here from Melbourne. Uh, we are in Melbourne. So she said, she, she was telling my, uh, uh, the, the pastor saying that, oh, the one month, uh, I want to blow up already. Uh. But every time I get angry, uh, uh, this one, you know, uh, uh, she, she heard a word, no. So our Lord is good. Uh, patience. Uh, then she control back. <laughs> she control back, you know. <clears throat> and then, of course, everything has a limit, right? And then on the day that she asked me to go to church, uh, the day. so after one month, all the things inside me went up, cannot let go. You know? The house so peaceful, uh, no quarreling, no shouting. So the, of course, my two sons, they are Christians already, right? Look at me, smiling only, because the mom accepted Christ already. Ma. So then one day, she came down on a Sunday, she, she came down on the staircase, wanted to ask me to go to church. So every time before I'm in Christ, uh, because my son in church for 10 years, I don't want to go show, she will scold me. Uh, we all fight one. You know, like, okay. But in the end, I still go. Uh. So one year, maybe go for Christmas and Easter. Only, uh, okay. So I know already, she will fight one. So I look at her, my chance to let go of everything. Uh. I want to start third world war with her. You know? <laughs> so as she was coming down, 
oh, then she asked me, uh, dear, would you like to come with us to church, you know? Well, I shouted at her, no, I'm not going to church. Well, I shouted at her, then don't know what I said, huh? But foul language a little bit. No, <laughs> I shouted at her, no. I saw her face uh, burning red already. Wow, I'm going to start this war already, man. Let go of all my frustration. Suddenly, what happened? She smiled at me. Uh. So how are you going to score your wife uh, if she smiled at you, you know? And uh, of course, we love our... <laughs> how also we fight or what? We also love our, our spouse right, and children, correct? So you smile at me. Then I was thinking, how come uh, can transform 180 degrees from a woman... Angry woman, <laughs> gentle, can smile at me, you know. You know what happened? The Lord told her one word, smile. But I look at the smile, I think back whether genuine smile or not. Not sure, la, you know. But I thank God for that, no. If she didn't smile, she'd get angry, la. I wouldn't be standing here already. <laughs> right, no? Now I'm 13 years in Christ. So you see, God la, has a way, you want to know. So I'm, I don't know why I share with you all this. La. So the way, maybe to emphasize, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, God will always give away the escape. But you also must know the word of God. So like I said, when you bind your, your mind to the mind of Christ, you bind yourself to, you can bind yourself to the cross, the finished work at the cross, you know? Bind your marriage, your business, huh? and all the promises of God uh, that you can do this. Correct? Amen. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's just not bind up evil spirits. Bind up, no. Uh, and I believe <clears throat> if you are sick, bind up yourself to the stripes of Jesus in Isaiah 53 verse 5. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm here. You bind up, no. Correct? Like I said, bind up. Uh, and then <clears throat> you must know uh, when the word loose means what? Uh? <clears throat> loose means to untie, right? In the word, untie, uh, to unfasten your chains on this. But what Moses is saying is to unite yourself. Unite yourself to the promises of the covenant of the great I Am. Uh, that's why you unite yourself uh, to it, you know. So, if you use this binding and loosing in your life to the promises of God, I believe uh, your, your life will be different. Man. Because the word, the promises, is the promise of God to your life. And I want you to know that in Numbers 23, verse 19. Uh, it says, God is not a man that he will lie. Huh? He's not a man that he will change his mind. Right? And has he not spoken and not act? You see? Has he not promised and not fulfilled? So when I talk to God, uh, I want to claim something. Uh, it's not that he doesn't know. I will quote Numbers 23, 19. Man. Right? Has he not promised and not fulfilled? And then you look at 1 Kings 8, uh, 1 Kings 8, 56. Uh, <clears throat> it says clearly, not one word of the promises of God has failed. All has been fulfilled. Not one word. So, of course, there's sometimes we, we, we pray and we don't get an answer. It's not that God don't answer you. <clears throat> he wants to give you what is good. Huh? He didn't say yes now. He also never say no. He just said patient, you wait. <laughs> For, you know? But we must always pray <clears throat> the things that God promised that is good for your life. There's one word in the Bible, very confusing one, you know, when I read uh, in James 4, verse 2. Uh, you do not get because you do not ask. So when I read, uh, wow, everything I ask, you get. Uh, <laughs> he says, my God says, you do not get because you don't ask. So I must ask. Then Matthew 7, verse 7, also say, uh, uh, for whoever who asks, well, receive, uh, correct? No? Uh, so, then you go and ask things like, things that way outward. Uh, uh, well, uh, then, but James 4, verse 3 says what? No. So, we're asking, we've been praying. You still don't get. Uh, so, verse 3 says, why? You ask for your own selfish agenda, for yourself only. Uh, or your own, the word there says, well, own, own pleasure, no. You get what I mean? But of course, God will supply all our needs. Huh? Philippians 4.19 says, God will supply all our needs. Right? Correct? Uh, but we need our daily bread. When you pray the Lord's prayer, right? He'll give it to us. But we need to pray every day. The bread is for today, you know. You cannot pray the bread for tomorrow and one week one. Correct? No? 
In the Old Testament, the manna came every day, you go and collect and eat. Ma. Right? It's, it's not that, oh, you collect everything for one week. Huh? But on the sixth day, Sabbath, before the rest day, the seventh day, you collect double portion. Huh? God will give you the manna from heaven for double portion. Correct? So, <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> you, as long as you know what is God's will, what is God's plan, His word for you. First John 5, 14 and 15. <clears throat> he says, this is the confidence that when we approach God, uh, that we ask for anything, that is according to God's will. Right? We ask, we pray. Huh? He hears us. <clears throat> Verse 15 says, And when we know that He hears us, you know that He hears us because we are asking for the will of God. Like today, if you are sick in your body, it's God already promised you. It's legally bound loose in heaven already. Huh? It's God's nature to heal you. And you say, by His stripes, you are healed. Already died. I want to believe them. Huh? You want to have some more, two, three, four, or five, you are joking. You see? So, this is something you cannot ask. Right? Things like that, that's for example. Correct or not? So, when you ask God's will, you claim the promise of God, you claim the word of God, you hear us, and then we must be persistent. It's just not one time. Some people, you know, I want to share a testimony with you. Uh, you heard of uh, Charles and Francine, Francine Hunter. Great evangelist from Australia, way back, you know, 19, very early 19s. Uh. You know, they love, they, they want to pray for healing one, healing. <clears throat> so they've they learned in church to pray for healing. Do you know what happened? They prayed for 1,000 people, not even one healing. <laughs> Don't talk miracle, you know. Not even one, not even one, the leg can extend, or back pain, you know. simple thing, not even one. 1,000 people they have prayed, not even one. Uh, I mean, for us, uh, don't say 1,000. Uh. Uh, you give up at 100. Uh. Do you do that 100? <laughs> huh? This is 1,000. Keep on praying. No, no healing, nothing, you know. But the 1,001, the miracle took place. You know? The healing took place. And then they became, wow, they traveled the whole world to, to, to pray for healing and deliverance. Yeah. And uh, one of their specialties is bones. Uh. <clears throat> the leg extended, spine S shape, uh, scoliosis, uh, straightened. This is one of their specialty, right? And you know, I pray for people with short legs. Uh, how many? I cannot remember. I've been holding people's leg, you know, to pray, and the leg will always extend, right? Always it will extend on the leg, bones. I pray for scoliosis, just straighten. Steel plate turned to bone, you know. Huh? In Tanzania, in Indonesia, even in Ipo, steel plate and the pelvic all turned turn to bone. Bones, you know. Uh, so the Chinese Cantonese saying is talk tai kyok. I've been lifting always, but why? Because I read the book, but I know their testimony. You know how I read the book, this is how I know 1001 read the book. So you need to claim it, you know. You need to claim, man. All this you need to claim. Okay, let me <coughs> tell you this. Huh? <coughs> Why you need to claim? If you want to be this ministry, you need to claim the promises of God. And whatever, okay, this year, <coughs> I, the Lord spoke to one couple to do a YouTube channel for me uh, under my name, Evangelist Eddie Young. Actually, it's also my ministry, Eddie Fire Ministries International, right? 
So I, I never do this. We are too busy going, no time to do all this. So she do the, the, the YouTube channel. <coughs> huh? you, you can subscribe to it, you know. Just type Evangelist Eddie Young. But you type Eddie Young, many things come out. My testimony is there. But you go to Evangelist Eddie Young. And then the Lord said, put all the miracles inside there. So we try to gather, <coughs> you know. <coughs> I remember the late Dato Chua dreaming. He invited me to go to Sabah in this town called Nabawan. It's a town Nabawan there, and uh, there were about 2,000 old people. So I, I preached the word, you know. Then I prayed for healing the time. <coughs> there was one woman, uh, why I want to share with you this. <coughs> he, she brought a three year old boy, never walked before in his life. Three year old boy. Right. Then I told the pastor to pray for her, pray for him. Then he walked, then he fell down. So I went down, I took him on my lap. I just did what Jesus did in Mark chapter 10, verse 14, 15. Took him on my lap. You know, the, the young children, the children making a lot of noise. And the disciples asked them to go away. But the Lord said, let these children come to me. It's children like this who inherit the kingdom of God. But if you look at it, <coughs> and, uh, and then he put them on his lap and he just blessed everyone. Just pray, bless everyone. Of course, this one, God wants us to have childlike faith. Uh, to know that we have a father in heaven. Anything just like your, your you, you have children, your children want anything and they, you can afford, you buy for them, you give them. Correct or not? Education, how also. Go and sell the house, mortgage, so you give them ed good education. All right? uh, without education, it's, it's a tough life. You know? How do you want to do? Right? What, can, what can you do? What occupation can you do? Right? So, but when the Lord blessed them, and then they so happy. So I took the child, <coughs> set, put him on my lap. I prayed the same words, <coughs> bless him. And then took him up <coughs> and he started, you can see the video, the uh, video is in my channel. He started to move very slowly the leg, you know, no strength. And then he started running to the mother, you know. You can see the video, he was running to the mother, to the mom. I asked the mom who would stand there, call him. You see, we need encouragement, man. Huh? Encouragement is what? When you pray already, you must ask the person anything that you cannot do last time. Like, especially these uh, shorter legs, uh, is, their spine uh, could be slip this, many slip this here like that. You know, slip this is terrible, right? You got to go, some got to go operation, you know, got to put still to climb it. <coughs> there are many also slip this, get healed just like that. Because when your leg extended, straightened up, like, same length, uh, the slip, this go back inside, you know, originally. Then you are healed, really. So before that, they cannot turn. You know, then after they ask that, after a prayer, turn like that, turn like that, then you can see the miracle has taken place. <coughs> Correct. And then, this boy started running to the mom. Mom took him up so happy. <coughs> One girl there, four years old. She got cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, yeah? something wrong with the brain, you know. And cerebral palsy, the leg is inward one. Uh. Inward. Uh. Nobody prayed for her. She saw the boy running to the mom. <coughs> she told the mom, I want to walk, you know. So I just told her, Pastor, just bring her. Walk. Her leg just stretched out. Stretched out, you know. And you can see in the video, she, first time she walked like a cartoon. Uh. <laughs> ah, the leg like that, walk like that, you know. So happy. You get what I mean? Nobody prayed for her. <clears throat> it's a presence. That's right. And the word has been preached. The word of God has been preached. Right? And uh, uh, Mark 16, verse 20. Yes, you need, it says, and the, uh, verse 19 says, the disciples went everywhere to preach the word. Right? Because Jesus said in uh, Mark 16, 15, go to all the world, preach huh? the gospel. All creation, man. all creatures, right? And verse 19, the disciples went everywhere to preach, to share the gospel, correct? And Mark 16, verse 20. <clears throat> this is for all of us. Huh? And the Lord worked with them. Worked with all disciples, right? <clears throat> and confirmed His word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Confirm His word. That's why the word of God is so important. So every time the word of God has been 
preached has been declared into the spiritual realm. Like, when anyone is in the pulpit, uh, my belief, uh, it's not that God has already ordained that you stand in the pulpit. So every word of God, promise God, that has been declared. Uh, you might think, oh, just saying it, it's not. It, it goes into the spiritual realm, you know. Do you know that? So it's for that person who hear the word to take it with faith. Huh? To receive it, you know. Right? Not, uh, and then you, you see things happen because there's a war going on in the second heaven. Well, I, I don't know how long <laughs> I devoted, but you're still with me. Uh. You get what I'm trying to say, right? Okay. So, if, if you read that there's a first heaven, second heaven, third heaven, right? First heaven, we see the sky. Huh? Second heaven, that's where the Satan is and all those fallen angels. Third heaven is where God lives, uh, the throne of God is in third heaven. There are sometimes we pray, we pray, why we don't get the answer? Because you've got to go through this second heaven that the Satan and the fallen angels dwell. You know? But you must know your prayers will not fall to the ground. Huh? It's only maybe a matter of timing. But sometimes you say, why so long? But if you read, huh? One day in heaven is 1,000 years on earth. Oh. <laughs> you know, there's a word about 1,000 years on earth, right? <clears throat> so, we need to break through. Huh? You, if you read the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, you can see. In, fact, uh, in Daniel chapter 9, you see, when chapter 9 says, the angel told uh, Daniel, Prophet Daniel, when you have started to pray, huh? God already gave the answer to ask me to give you the answer. But in Daniel 10, the prince of Persia, huh? like handcuffed him, hindered him, uh, stopped him uh, uh, from bringing the answer to, to Daniel. And then he, he was fighting. He said what? The angel said what? Only Archangel Michael came to help me. One Archangel Michael came. Billions, you know how many demons, all those fallen angels. Archangel Michael came to help me. And then I was released. He was stuck there for three, 21 days, ma. In Daniel chapter 10. And then he gave. And then he said, What? Now I give you the answer <coughs> to your prayer. I'm going back there again. Second heaven. To fight this. There's a war going on. So that's why you need the scripture. When the scripture, the word of God, Prophet God, sent out, uh, something is happening. Uh. And there's one word in the Bible in Psalms 103, verse 20. Uh. This one talk about angels. One, you know. huh? uh, he says, they listen to the word of God in Psalms 103, verse 20. Right? They do God's bidding. So, they only hear the word of God. When you declare the word of God, the angels of the Lord will suddenly pay attention. Huh? There will be attention. Psalms 103, verse 20. <coughs> the heavenly uh, uh, angels will do only God's bidding, God's word when it's declared out. So, there's war going on. So we cannot be passive. We cannot be relaxed, you know. We are Christians, huh? we are already at war. We are already at war, already. right? At war with the devil, our perpetual enemy, always trying to destroy mankind, right? Destroy families, you see. Now, after the MCO, so many mental cases. Uh, there are ministries who started now to take care of this mental health, you know. <clears throat> Lead to schizophrenia, hear voices, Suicide, huh? suicide thoughts, all these, these things are happening now. You get what I mean? So, without the word of God, you, you cannot go against it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> addictions and all this. Huh? So, we have in our church in Glad Tidings, we have this uh, life community. We call it life. Huh? Life. These are the addicts, addicts who come. And then also, I remember somewhere. In uh, Saramban, Saramban further, there's a town. It's also in Saramban. Uh, uh, it's for those uh, mental issue one, right? Mental issue. My friend also do one for, for, for drugs, uh, gambling also. Someone has one gambling here before Malacca, all these things. You notice something. Uh, why uh, they are delivered, why they are healed? When you go there, the first thing they read the word of God. Morning, their Bible study, read the Word of God. And then for those uh, psychophrenia mental problems, they take medication. Medication is important. If you don't take medication, you must stabilize the person first. 
then only you can receive. So why they are so successful? In, in the home, uh, let's say in your house, you have someone like that, you go to a hospital, okay, you must take this medication. The guy cannot control him. He become violent. I mean, we have these are cases, violent, don't want to take the medication, become worse. You know? Then also can become too spiritual. You know? what the, the devil will use, use the person, you know? And give you prophecy also, which you think was suddenly quite accurate. Wow, whatever, things like that. Huh? So, the medication there, when you go to this out center, you're on time to take the medication. And sometimes uh, there's one case, uh, we send him there, every month got to go one time to the hospital to take injection. So, so serious case, or not, they take injection. Stabilize them, the word of God they read, and then let them do something. Huh? Do not take, no chance to take drugs already. <laughs> They're there, you know, everything. So, but I noticed the success in all this gambling addiction, uh, mental health, all these drugs, you know, all this. Uh, like our church, now they are all set free. <clears throat> they do work. Huh? Chinese New Year, they will make those, what you call that, the dry meat, you know. Uh, they, they do all this sort of thing, help to do clearance of the, like, uh, house cleansing. They drive the lorry, you know, things like that. So you see, a transformed life. No more thinking of taking drugs, huh? gambling, all these mental issues. Eh? All because of the Word of God. Every morning, every night, they will recite us and talk Word of God. Huh? Amen? Huh? So, uh, I think I better get back to this, <laughs> John. So, okay, you notice in John chapter 11, right? In verse, after Martha said, in verse 39, oh, foul smell, everything, after four days, uh, the Lord never listened to her. Which is true, the body of Lazarus is rotten. Why? <clears throat> okay. We have been to Egypt. I have been to Egypt. We went to this mummy place. Uh. You know, when they buy up this mummy, or even uh, in the, uh, the Israelites, uh, you buy with yards of cloth, right? But the thing is that the Egyptians, uh, they preserve the body as long as possible. They saw a lot of ointment, a lot of things, uh, med uh, even medication, whatever they put in there to preserve the body. But for the Israelites, the Jews is different, no. Everything from dust to dust must go back to dust. So they want it to be faster to decompose one. Huh? They will not let it extend to preserve, you know. So, they bind up with yards. Uh, imagine uh, the person, the, the, the people will bind up, bind up this Lazarus with yards and yards of uh, clothes, you know. Of, of. Then, decompose it. Very fast become rotten because they want it to be dust to go back. So this is the, their tradition, how they do it, uh, as opposed to the Egyptians. So the thing is that, of course our Lord knows, right? But he never listened. Uh, like as I said, peer pressure from people, all this, you don't want to listen. A way of escape. And then, in verse 43, the Lord spoke, uh, Lazarus, come forth. I think the authority uh, and the power of his voice, uh, when he called up, was his God anyway, right? called him up, took Lazarus up from hell. You know? uh, his his uh, soul came back. Uh, his soul came back. He really took him up from the grave. Right? But you notice that <clears throat> Lazarus was binded up with his clothes. Uh, right? So, binded up. He, he cannot walk freely. Uh. You, you imagine uh, the Lord like jumping. Uh, jumping, uh, <laughs> jumping out there. Straight away he came forth. What the Lord says? Uh, lose him. Let him go. Lose him. So, and then the, he, the, our Lord Jesus Christ Never ask an angel to lose him, to untie him or what, right? So, he just say, lose him is for the people who have done it. Now, then they go and untie him, everything, right? So, that's why it's our duty also. When we buy something, we must lose. So, okay, we, let's say now, okay, in business, supposing your business fail, things like that, you know, in my life, uh, before that, I was doing business. Uh, I meet high-level people, you know. Why it cannot work? Huh? Mahate office also I went because I work for a big publisher company. Right? I'm, I'm doing all this PR work, business development, director, get government project. My wife arranged for me to meet Tun Daim also because she worked for a very high-level person. She was the PA. 
So, and then, ding dong, ding dong, the project, he signed also, in the end, he left, and then, I think, uh, Badawi, uh, become Badawi, right? I also went with, to see Badawi. We, we, we will find the, I think this one later, you must chop, uh, before you post. This one. I mean, there are no people, uh, so you must cut off, I was telling you. I went in the same lift with Badawi, you know, with this woman. This woman, the Ustas teach him, the father teach him about Islam, you know, all this thing. And he signed something, well, got the project, you know, letter in 10. He's a finance minister. Huh? Pala is finance minister. Celebration, man. Done deal, really, or do. Big business, 800 million or, uh, to do one job in the Butterworth port there. Somehow, uh, like you eat the Chinese saying, Fei Jiu, you eat the pork already. Uh. Just eat already so you can sleep off. Uh. There's no way this thing, is, no way they don't get it, right? Okay. Then, Pala lost the election. Uh. <coughs> and then the Penang port, this chairman, uh, he, he told Pala that, oh, if you, how can you don't listen to the weakest, <sighs> hopeless prime minister, really? He go meeting, he sleep, man, you know. You go meeting with him, I come late, 9 o'clock, you come at 12 o'clock. You know, things like that. So, the chairman said, he take his own company to take over the project. <clears throat> Where got such thing, man, right? And then he told him, if you force me, I will join the opposition. I go and tell the lady, you go and tell him, you already lost already, one person go over, go, la, you know. Oh, then he said, ah, find something else, also gone. Then, Najib, when he was defence minister, I see him as a defence minister. Uh, our company give a lot of, take care of the pekan, all this thing, right? Be, then he become prime minister. Right? Get another job uh, along the way, you know, we need to do, also cannot get. I also wonder why. Uh, there is this spirit of failure there, you know. My sisters, spirit of failure. But my case is different now. Uh. I asked uh, the Lord, uh, why? Why you do this to me? Uh? You know, many things. But my wife told me, if I have all this money, millions, uh, today I also won't be standing here. Right? But uh, God works in mysterious ways. But if you ask me, if I don't have Jesus in my life, uh, to choice, uh, you give a choice. These millions you take, no Jesus in your life. You ask me now. I will still choose our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Huh? I also won't choose the millions. But if you look at it, my, my situation is a bit different. Uh, which is true. If I had those money, uh, really, uh, my life will change. Uh. My life is so different already. Right? Uh, so, God have His way. Which my wife, Irene, said, God have His way. You, know, you have this money, you won't be in with the Lord. Which is very true. Correct? Uh. But there's this, you will notice, in your life, uh, you want to do something, uh, every time you hit a wall, you know, sure got some issue. Uh. This one is a spirit of failure. Also considered spirit of poverty, you know. Uh, you notice from this generation, curse come down. Uh, you notice those families, because we minister a lot of people, we will always find out. So there's this spirit of poverty, spirit of failure. That's why you must bind it up. You must bind up this spirit of failure, bind up this spirit of poverty that is in your life, and also your future generation. Because it will come down one. It will also come down one. A lot of sickness, same thing, one, no? Come down. Okay. Then when you do that, you need to lose, ma. Right? You need to lose yourself, your children from it. Right? Also, sometimes, I don't know. Uh, sometimes a lot of single people, why they cannot get married? Well, they they date, they date few years after they broke off again. All this issue. Huh? So you must bind up this spirit. You know, this because God, you must use the word of God. God loves family. Uh, I'm speaking to someone here, I don't know, but God loves family. You must know this, you know. Uh, Genesis 1, you read 26, 28. God make us in His own image. Correct, no? And He says in Genesis 1, 28, He commanded Adam and Eve to multiply. Multiply means what? Have sons and daughters. That's why not all this LGBT Woman and woman, man and man, how are they going to produce, right? Is he made God made male and female, right? And he joined them up to become one spirit. Huh? 
So he says to multiply her sons and daughters to rule the earth, rule the birds in the sky, rule the, uh, the fishes in the sea, the animals that crawl around the ground. You see? That means you must pray like that. And then one word is Psalms 127, verse 3. Yeah, 127, verse 3. It says, Children are an inheritance from God. A reward. Sons, a reward from God, you know. I'm not saying daughters are no good. I love my daughter. In fact, it's the best thing that happened to me. My youngest child is a daughter, you know. Daughter very close to the father. Man. Also close to the mother. Lah, eh? But, you see, so you must claim it, you know. How you pray. I, we have prayed for 18 couples. Three years, no children. Eight years, many. Ten years, the longest one. Oh. So we pray, we pray, we claim it. Continue to pray and then they have children. Right? So your marriage is the same thing. You must say that. Huh? It's uh, in Genesis 2 verse 24. It's for this reason that a man will leave the father and mother and be joined with the wife and the two become one spirit. So your, the woman comes from where? The rib of Adam. Uh. That's why man got one rib short. Uh. So I tell them you pray this rib must go back inside to make the man complete. If not, both also not complete. Ah. Correct? No? Both cannot become one. So you, the rib, so you pray, oh, you, and then you must ask the Lord to show you. He will show you one. You know, you pray. So you must break this uh, spirit of a, a, a singleness, you know. Huh? Not married, must break. Then you must bind and you love family, so you pray to the Lord like that. <coughs> and, uh, okay, there's this disobedience, children. Uh, they disobey, play computer game, all this. There's another next time. Can I say? So you bind up the spirit of disobedience in your children. Right? And you lose them. Huh? You can say and lose them in the mind of Christ, you know. And uh, you can quote the uh, obedience is better than sacrifice. First Samuel 15, verse 22. Like that. You can do that. Lose them. So you will see uh, your life change when you use this principle. Amen. Uh, so it's our duty. Not only buy, we need to lose. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, we want to pray for... I haven't shared any testimony yet, but there are so many things that happen. <coughs> I encourage you to go into the YouTube channel. Why? Ah, I forgot to share about this. Uh. <coughs> okay. <coughs> now I know why. Remember the three-year-old boy walk, the four-year-old girl also walk, right? So we went to Philippines to do a healing service. A Filipino... Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel and saw these two miracles. <clears throat> Told a mother, a Filipino mother, who has the same case, a three year old boy that never walked before. <clears throat> so she brought the boy, came to the service. And then she, I told her, Your faith has healed your son. Because three year old to travel under the father's umbrella, you know, under the mom, I said, <clears throat> Your faith. Today, the, your son will walk. She was in tears. Why the three-year-old son? So I told her one thing. Why? Acts 10, verse 34. <clears throat> Our Lord is not a respecter of persons. This is about Cornelius, right? Cornelius is not in Christ. But yet, when Peter went there, he saw the Holy Spirit come upon them. They didn't believe. They thought only the Israelites, yeah, they, they only can receive the Holy Spirit. That's why he said, Oh, the Lord is not biased. Huh? He's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't care. So I told her, our Lord Jesus Christ has done this miracle for the two child. And he will do the same. Because he is not biased, he's not a respecter of persons. Just believe. And you will see the glory of God. In John 11 verse 40. Huh? And the Lord told Martha and Mary, believe and you will see the glory of God. Amen. It's to exercise your faith. So what happened? <coughs> I took the boy, <coughs> standing. He was, but I hold him so that he won't fall down. <coughs> I look at him. I just tell him, <coughs> you love Jesus? He just looked at me. He just nodded. Say, ah, ah, ah. So I said, you want to walk? <laughs> then I said, Jesus will give you strength to walk. Then he said, oh, oh. <laughs> so I just said, come, let's walk. Just like that, we started walking. He just started walking. Amen. That's so why I know that means 
whatever the miracle that took place, uh, you need to claim it. Uh, you need to take action. You need to go and then you claim it to receive. Right? I just talked to the boy. I didn't pray. The four-year-old girl, I didn't pray. Correct? Not. So we are supposed to receive, you know. That's why Matthew 7, verse 7, whatever, whoever who asks uh, will receive. Amen? In John 20, verse 22, <clears throat> you know this. What happened? Jesus said, he breathed breath on them. John 20, verse 22. And what did he say to the disciples? Receive the Holy Spirit. They received the breath of God and received the Holy Spirit. So today we want to receive. Amen? Huh? Just receive and, you know, we don't have to pray, just be in His presence. Huh? Huh? In His presence, just enjoy His presence. Do not think of your sickness. Huh? But of course, you go home, you exercise, binding and losing. Now it's different. You are in the house of God. This century is where the Holy Spirit, where our Lord Jesus Christ is. For Matthew 18, 20 says, when two or three gather in His name, He will be with us. Amen? Let's clap our hands on Lord Jesus Christ for His presence with us right now. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, I want to share something about, if you go into the channel, now I have two churches in Pakistan. The, the new church has fully been built, you know, and started service. Uh, the place is where the M's are. <laughs> so, uh, the Sunday service, full house, the, the, the place can manage, can sit 200 people. They don't have chairs all together sitting, full house, all the M's there, because they know about the healing power of Jesus Christ. So if you go into the channel, <clears throat> you will see in the healing rally, many things took place. The, this man demonized for up 10 over many years, set free. Set free. <clears throat> a, a young girl got asthma. Lord, give her new lungs. You know? And blind can see. You know, things like that always happening. You can see that if your situation is like that, you always quote Acts 10 verse 34. Lord, you are not biased. And it's something you must talk to, touch the heart of God. No? How come, Lord, you do this, you heal the person, you also do the same case, right? You are God of miracles. Huh? There's no reason. But of course, the issue of unforgiveness and bitterness, you need to release first. Huh? Correct? Huh? So, brothers and sisters, I encourage you, just go to YouTube, <coughs> type Evangelist Eddie Young, E-D-D-Y, huh? subscribe. Because when you subscribe, you press one more time, then you come out to videos. If not, a lot of my preaching one inside there. <clears throat> you press videos, then all the healing miracles will come. I mean, you press two times. And then you, you need to encourage people. Like the lady encouraged the, the mother in Philippines when he saw this miracle took place in summer. Right? The miracle took place. Amen? <clears throat> so we want to pray right now. So I... I and also some... There is... Uh, sometimes... So you might be in a marriage difficulty. Like you feel that last time what I, and my wife, we were fighting, quarreling, and all these things happening. So this is disharmony, friction in the house, you know. No peace, right? So today we will bind up this spirit of disharmony, bind up this friction huh, in, the, in your home, and you lose into your marriage what? Love. God is love. Amen? Right? Lose peace into your family. Right? Maybe you've got issues with your husband or your children. You lose this peace, this joy into your family in the name of Jesus. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. So let's bow our heads and uh, in the stillness. Bow our heads. Enjoy His presence. And I just pray over you. And when you feel that you need to come to the altar in repentance, <coughs> just <coughs> in a, <coughs> later you can come. <coughs>